Please welcome the Secretary of the United States Department of Commerce, Gina Raimondo. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is fantastic to see all of you here. Uh, it's, as I was, you know, waiting to uh, come out, I could feel the buzz and the energy. It's a packed audience, and it's just great. It's a, it's a great event, and a huge thank you to Secretary Holland, uh, who's doing a phenomenal job, uh, and thank you for hosting us all here. It's an honor for me to be here. It really is. I'm so pleased I was able to be here in person for the third uh, Tribal Nations Summit. Um, at the outset, I do want to acknowledge that the Commerce Department recognizes tribal sovereignty and the fundamental self-governing right of tribes. And I want you to know, and hear from me, I try to set the tone at the top, to reiterate our entire department's commitment to working with and coordinating with you, the tribal communities, to ensure you have the resources you need for economic growth. Economic growth only matters if it's equally shared. And that's what this is about. Our mission at the Commerce Department is to do just that, to create the conditions for economic growth and prosperity um, for all communities, for all communities and for all people. And thanks to President Biden's leadership, we now have an unprecedented amount of money and resources to invest in communities all across the country investing in infrastructure, job training, broadband, regional economies, and we are unbelievably serious throughout the, gov throughout the government under the president's leadership and specifically in the Commerce Department to be intentional as we invest this money to include tribes in our design work to make sure that your needs and priorities are addressed. And that's what I want to talk about with you for a couple minutes here today to highlight for you some of the programs specifically that the Commerce Department is running right now. <clears throat> so first relates to high-speed internet. I don't need to tell you, it is heartbreaking to know how many families, children, schools, businesses on tribal lands that don't have the internet. It's not okay in 2023. It's not okay. We have the resources to close the digital divide once and for all. And we at the Commerce Department are obsessed with making sure that we work with you and hear from you. So we invest this money. We have $52 billion at the Commerce Department to invest this money in partnership with you to make sure we close the digital divide once and for all. We have to date awarded about $2 billion to more than 220 tribal entities to expand high-speed internet network deployment and digital skills. And that's just the beginning. That is just the beginning. In July, we announced another billion dollars in additional funds available for that program. So that's three billion. Additionally, we are announcing greater funds next year uh, to make sure that everybody is connected. And that means affordably, it's not okay to have the internet at 100 bucks or 200 bucks a month. That's not affordable. It's gotta be reliable and affordable. Paying $200 a month for satellite that goes out when the weather's bad, that doesn't cut the mustard. What we're talking about is truly reliable and affordable. Uh, I met last year uh, in Arizona, when it was, by the way, quite a bit warmer than it is here today, and I met with a, a lot of tribal leaders, and they told me how the grants will help them to transform their communities. Really moving stories that I heard from people and parents and teachers, uh, physicians, community health organizations, and that's what this is all about. And also, it enables tribes to ensure and preserve your cultural traditions. That's number one, that's broadband. 
We're also focused on making transformational investments in local economies to create quality jobs, to help small businesses, and expand innovation. Um, fr frankly, and you know this, for far too long, the federal government has left tribal communities kind of on your own, on your own and left out to struggle in the face of economic challenges. And government programs offered training for jobs, but the jobs didn't materialize. Or the grants were too small. Maybe we made small dollar infrastructure grants and projects, but it wasn't enough to support and grow your economies. President Biden has told us we need to meet the moment. Not enough, jobs not materializing, infrastructure grants that are too small isn't good enough. So as a result, to meet the president's leadership demands, one thing the Commerce Department did is we created something called the Good Jobs Challenge. We put a half a billion dollars into training so people could get jobs that exist today. It's been transformative. These are large dollar grants to make sure we meet the mission. And just one example, the Lakota Funds in South Dakota, <clears throat> excuse me, is receiving $5 million to create a construction trades training program for residents of nine tribal reservations. That's just one example which I'm uh, sharing because what they're doing there is training people to get jobs and in the process, addressing the shortage of housing inventory that exists in that area. Similarly, part of our new go big and make big investments, we at the Commerce Department established a billion dollar Build Back Better Regional Economic Development Challenge. And once again, we put the needs of tribes front and center, um, which we had not done. I'm, I'm going to be honest and say we hadn't done enough of that in the past, and we're trying to make up for that now. So as an example, the Mountain Plains Regional Native CDFI Coalition, led by the Four Bands Community Fund, is receiving $45 million from the Department of Commerce to grow the indigenous finance sector and expand economic opportunity in tribal communities in Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming. So once again, we're trying to show up in a big way for tribes that need and deserve it. Within Commerce, the Economic Development Administration established a first of its kind $100 million program to support tribal governments and uh, indigenous communities. So that's all within the umbrella of the EDA that reports up to me in the Commerce Department, Economic Development Agency. Um, I want to just talk about one other important area, also in the Commerce Department, NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Um, this is, by the way, NOAA is 40% of the Department of Commerce. You may not know that, but it's a huge piece of what we do. And we at NOAA are seeking to build climate-ready communities, especially in including your communities, to help you manage natural resources and meet the challenges of climate change. I, I am working so hard, and this comes straight from me, to improve our consultation and engagement with tribal communities. NOAA knows we need to do a better job. We're doing a better job. I think we've done a better job. And we will, con I'm promising you continuous improvement in the way that NOAA does consultation and engagement with tribal communities. This year, for example, after extensive tribal engagement, NOAA set aside almost $400 million, a $400 million set tribal set aside from the Inflation Reduction Act funds for tribal priorities, including fish, pass fish passage, fish hatcheries, and capacity building. Crucial, vital project. Yeah, thank you. It's, this was a big investment. <laughs> Habitat restoration. It matters. This has to be continuous and sustainable. You know, the fishery has to be maintained so it's there in a year and two and 10 and 20 and 50 years for the next generation. And so we're going to make those investments so that happens and, and sustain the livelihoods of tribal communities all along our coasts. NOAA is also leveraging funds to provide additional support 
for tr tribes to conserve and restore salmon and steelhead populations and their habitats. In fact, yesterday, just yesterday, we announced the availability of $106 million in funding through the Pacific Coastal Salmon Recovery Fund, which will support efforts by states and tribes to protect and conserve these key fish species. So I know we have more work to do. We are committed to continuing to work, committed to get our tribal consulta consultation and engagement right. But I want you to know we are on it, we're committed to it, and this is more money than ever that NOAA has invested in fisheries and fish habitat and climate in your communities. So, you know, every tribal leader I've ever spoken to on this topic, and I have personally spoken to many, talks about preserving a culture, preserving a way of life, and preserving it for the next generation. So it's more than just fishing for today, for, for you know, sustenance. It's about, it's about, you know, sustainment over the long run, and that's why we take this so seriously. Um, so, you know, we have a lot of energy for this work. We have a lot of energy to work with you. I'm the luckiest one in the federal government because I have an amazing director of the Office of Native Affairs and Economic Development, Sean, who's here, Sean Duchesne. Where are you, Sean? Raise your hand. Back there. Um, Sean's a little bit of a rock star in your community, and I'm lucky because she works for me. But you need to know this. Before we got Sean to serve as the director of the Office of Native Affairs and Economic Development, that position at the Commerce Department had been vacant for more than 10 years. Like, we weren't even trying. So when I say to you, I care about your communities, and I know your communities have been often left behind, not at the table, weren't listened to, weren't invested in. I get that. We are changing that. I've just listed here in just my department billions of dollars of investment, but I also want you to know um, we're committed. This is, this is the beginning of a lot more to come. Long-term sustained changes to make investments in your communities to ensure that tribal communities, tribal businesses, and tribal workers are equipped for success and share in the economic opportunity um, that you so richly deserve. So thank you for having me, and thank you for your commitment, and thank you for hosting me.